city of Johannesburg's reclaimers began recycling waste long before it became fashionable to do so, but more recently the outsourcing of recyclables by the city through Pick It Up to private companies has brought them increased hardship. All of them are affected, you know. Some of them, they even, you know, they can't, they don't even do this work anymore because now they can see that the private companies here are here and they're beating us on the street. If they find you with this place, with their plastics, they start beating you. We already signed the contracts and there was an oversight on our part in that. In the planning, you know, there was no consideration of waste pickers, which, which, which I also lamented. The city of Johannesburg promised to integrate reclaimers into its waste management systems, but to date, they remain largely outside and they feel bullied by private business with the blessing of the city. They say they are beaten, harassed and stigmatized. Actually, um, actually from Kimbali, then I went, my parents relocated to Northwest Mafike, and then I came to Joburg by 2000, and, yeah, 2000. And then I finished my matric here in Soweto, and then I went on to Vista University by then. And then uh, I just did two years of my HR degree, and then I dropped out because my father lost his job, and, there was no way I could, you know, afford to pay my fees and all that. And then I got a job at uh, Itotech uh, Lighto Printers. And then I worked there for six months and then the contract just ended. And then there was nothing that I could do and then just, that, this was the only way to survive. 37-year-old Stephen Liu's day starts at 5 a.m. when he takes his trolley from Newtown in the inner city to the upmarket suburb of Linden in Johannesburg. Stephen says, this was once fertile ground to search for recyclable waste, but now most of it is taken before it gets here. How much can you make a day? You know, before before those years, past years, I was able to make about 500 rand a day, but now the municipality has introduced these private companies that are, that's doing the same job that we are doing, and you know they're using trucks, and now they've introduced this separation at source program where they've got plastics and now the residents are separating and putting their materials into those uh, branded plastics of which are meant for those private companies. So now we are unable to get materials the way we used to get it before. So now we have dropped, uh, the income has dropped very much high in a way that I would say about 60%. Reclaimers in Johannesburg are fighting with the municipality ever since they contracted private companies to collect recyclable waste depriving them of earning a living. The city has, hasn't engaged with us, you know, uh, what they did last year, July, by the 13th of July, we went on a strike to say, because we saw the advert on, on the newspapers that they're going to be introducing the private companies. And then we went on the street and made a strike to say, no, you can't do that because now you'll be taking away our livelihood. Pick It Up's managing director, Lungili Dlamini, says he only became aware of reclaimers' concerns when they embarked on a protest. After the waste pickers had brought this to our attention as Pick It Up, I did engage because we already signed the contracts and there was an oversight on our part in that. In the planning, you know, there was no consideration of waste pickers, which, which, which I also lamented. And then I said to the team, look, we really need to engage with them. Reclaimers say since the private companies took over, they arrive early or sleep over near the suburbs to get to the recyclable material to avoid being harassed by the private companies. It's so painful, particularly in cities. Waste pickers have to wake up early, three o'clock in the morning to be on the streets. One of the challenges for waste pickers who are moving on the streets is that they have to be there before the collection by the municipality and they follow collection. Sometimes collection happens in different areas. They have to move around and be there. You go to Joburg, they wake up 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 a.m. in the morning. You find them on the road until 4 p.m., 5 p.m. during the day. According to the CSIR research in 2016, the reclaimers saved the country about 750 million rand 
in landfill airspace. In Johannesburg, the city rolled out its separation of recyclable waste in townships in 2009 and has since extended this to some suburbs. At township level, we, um, uh, we formed a partnership with 25 cooperatives. Uh, they're using our facilities, drop-off sites, to do the sorting. And they collect on special days paper and plastic and so on in the townships where they operate. They, we provide them with trucks and they then sort at our facilities and then they sell to buyback centers. So that's, you know, if you like, the township scenario. The participation rate there, by participation rate, we look at the number of households per the total number of households in a township in which we've rolled out this separation at source. It's sitting at plus or minus 18%. The diversion, obviously, uh, from landfill of, uh, you know, plastic, uh, organic um, um, uh, streams uh, is sitting at about 9.5%. However, it appears that the city had not included reclaimers into its waste recycling plans. As of last year, 2017, we then rolled out the separation at source to middle to high income areas, you know. Uh, and uh, we appointed two private service providers. They're not cooperatives. So what they do do is they provide their own facilities, you know, their own trucks. They provide their own bags. You know, they don't have, we don't have to pay for their fuel and so on and so forth. So it's an open competitive process. The formal waste industry is reported to be a 50 billion rand business. It informally started by the country's reclaimers in 2004, yet they say they are being excluded. This is one of the biggest landfill sites in the city of Johannesburg. It's perched on a hill overlooking the city. In the south is the Turfontein Racecourse. To the north is the city. The city says landfills such as this one only have a lifespan left of about eight years. And if a proper plan is not implemented soon to deal with all this waste, it could create a huge problem for the environmental health of the city. At the landfill, the, the conditions are very dangerous because some of the waste get mixed with medical waste. And then some of the waste get mixed with like wet waste from, from, from the household. And the, the industrial waste, some of the industries, because that's only an industrial area. Some of the waste, they get contaminated by chemicals so sometimes we, we didn't know. So when you see something, all of us, we, we rush there, and then after all, someone will tell you that hey, there are bulbs there, there are this, there are this. So, but in our mind, we, 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 we see the money, like maybe metal, things like that, that we, we can make money out of. But in that process, it is dangerous for us. Despite Pick It Up's efforts to reduce waste, most of it still ends up on landfills. The 2016 CSIR study found that each reclaimer diverts about 24 tons of recyclable waste from the country's landfills. Mostly people out of desperation looking to put bread on the table. They will go for alternatives. That's how even myself I started where I lost my job, I have to find an alternative to make a living. So that's how it became. Presently, the industry in South Africa, the last research by the National Department of Environmental Affairs sits us at 90,000, but we were saying not everybody was counted. There are places that are counted. And every year since the research has been done, uh, we have seen the growth of the sector absorbing many people every year. So presently, I would say we're sitting around 120,000 to 125,000 waste pickers nationally. Beneath the landfill, we visited an informal buyback center to find out what is the monetary value of recyclable materials. Here is a, our center where we buy papers, steel, 
uh, everything that we recycle. People, they come there from top of the mountain with trucks, some they come with trolleys, then we scale for them, we pay them cash. That's how we make money. He says there is big money in recycling when the waste is separated and sold to big companies. Per day, I can make a profit of 2,000 to 3,000 a day. A day? So, yeah, so you can calculate it to a week, to a month. With that money, how many people do you have to pay? So far, I have six guys that they are working for me. I pay them 1,000 rand per week. Uh, so it's, there's good money, eh? Yeah, there's good money, also creating jobs for the people that they are not working. Simon Bata says reclaimers have difficulty getting a good price for their recyclable materials, as prices are constantly undercut at buyback centers because the market is not regulated. These workers, particularly the ones that are working on the landfill, they become exploited to municipal workers, some of them, and those that are on the streets to motorists. But the most challenging one is the, the, the selling point, the buyback centers where pricing becomes a challenge. In South Africa, prices are not regulated, prices are not fair. Majority of the buyback centers, you don't know their prices, they don't have price list. So you become vulnerable because some of them have to negotiate better prices. Pick it up says they will soon extend their separation of recyclable waste to other residential areas which is expected to become mandatory. The first phase kicked off under a cloud when the city signed a lucrative tender with private companies, leaving out the reclaimers. How much are you paying these private companies? Um, top of my head, um, top of my head because it's a rate and, and you know, and uh, I, I, I stand corrected, but we, we, we're looking at plus or minus, I think, 20 rand per household. It must have amount in maybe millions. Well, I don't know the, the, the total contract, uh, you know, uh, value of hand, uh, but I can, I can safely say that it's a three-year contract. It started last year. Um, it started last year just after it started as the MD. I think it was in October. I started in May, and the process of the supply chain process was, was well advanced. And um, when we then awarded, you know, then we found out that, you know, we had not done our homework. But as I say, you know, uh, I cannot do much about what has happened, but going forward is to attend to the immediate concerns and ensuring that it doesn't happen in the future when we're all out. The South African Waste Pickers Association says they don't want to become formalized workers municipalities should find other ways of integrating them into the country's waste management systems. Waste pickers should be integrated within the waste management system and within the whole value chain of the waste recycling industry. That's what we've been encouraging. Yes, formalization, people were talking of formalization, but we say the sector has two faces. It's labor and it's business after hours. So if you integrate, it's better because you take care of both labor and business. But formalization sometimes comes with heavy price. People will formalize you as a worker, then the business side dies. Reclaimers like Stephen Liu says, until recently, they were able to make a decent living from recycling waste. For an organization that we formed during the strike, uh, IJRC, Interim Toga Reclaimers Committee. Uh, what do we want to do? We don't want to end up, you know, pulling the trolleys. We want to mobilize ourselves, form cooperatives, and challenge the municipality to say, here we are, we've been doing this work for quite a long time. Can you at least give us a support, provide us with trucks so that we don't use trolleys because we're fighting with the law enforcement agencies, metropolis and all that, that we're causing traffic on the road with these trolleys. So the city actually what we want, we want them to support us, give us trucks so that our work can be easy and we don't cause, you know, those accidents and traffic on the road. We actually want to end up climbing the value chain of waste management. Pick it up says it's since realized that the reclaimers' concerns are legitimate and that things will change. They have now established a task team to deal with the matter.
each and every waste picker is, is highly affected by this. Everyone that's doing this work uh, informally is it's, 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 it's affected by this because uh, uh, around Joburg we've got about uh, 90, let's say the whole uh, South Africa we've got about, let's say it's about 90,000 uh, 90, waste pickers all over the country and Joburg is about 62,000. Uh, waste pickers so all of them are affected you know some of them they even you know they can they don't even do this work anymore because now they can see that the private companies here are here and they beating us on the street if they find you with this plastic their plastics they start beating you we've got cases where we've got waste pickers that are in hospital they've been harassed by these people and we've been trying to engage with the seat pick it up as well to say what do you do you see these private companies now they're harassing us but for now it's a done deal between Pick It Up and private companies. Initially, the reclaimers had hoped to benefit from two of the four contracts, but they have been left out. It was an open and a competitive bid with deliverables. And, um, you know, in, uh, initially we had intended to a point four, uh, given the, you know, the budget, budget availability. Uh, however, we had had to rebase our budget, and then we ended up appointing two. And if you ask me, that was a blessing in disguise because imagine if we had to roll this out at scale and then having left out the waste pickers. Reclaimers say they find themselves excluded from making a living from an industry which they started, experts say the concept of waste recycling was not even seriously considered by the state until 2001. This is when various stakeholders met in Polokwane to draft a declaration on waste management. We've got enough policies. It's to come out with a plan of implementation. We need to implement what we, how are we going to systematically deal with the waste, the infrastructure, and also capacitating the local government, who are the people who are implementing at ground level. So it is necessary that we share the experiences, we strengthen one another in order that when we go out, no more boardrooms, no more meetings, we just implement. And it's going to assist us because as we are fighting waste, we, we can win with waste. There are many things that we do will be creating employment. The then Gauteng Environmental Affairs MEC Mary Metcalf implemented a waste collection program in the province by introducing the first pick it up bins. Johannesburg City's Pick It Up is going to be launching a big project in Soweto this week of cleaning up as well as giving new big 240 litre strong containers. If the people of Soweto, as an example, commit themselves to using those bins, to not having anything lying on the street, we'll have a clean place where people can have their dignity and some self-respect. However, the separation of waste at source in residential areas was still a distant plan for the city back then. This is when unemployed people, out of desperation, began digging in bins to unearth valuable recyclables. It can take close to 100 to 200 kgs, but not only plastics, because when I go around picking, I take paper, magazine, everything that can, that can be recyclable. But when I get here, I sort them into categories. Like here you see it's green. Yeah, it's green. Plastics, yes, yeah. it's plastics, yeah. but it's green. And then there, it's clear. So they don't go plastics together. the same way. They don't go together. You must separate them for, for the better price. Because if you mix them, the prices are not good. Before the Waste Act was established in 2008, Everything in a rubbish bin and on landfill sites was considered to be waste. It was buried as it was assumed to have no value. Houting uh, and, uh, uh, is running out of landfill space, which traditionally, you know, we just take waste and dispose it off at landfill, landfill sites. However, you know, land is a very scarce resource, especially in and around, you know, metros such as uh, the city of Johannesburg. So you will find that we're investing a lot of um, um, uh, resources, financial and otherwise, um, in order to uh, fast track and improve 
our uh, waste minimization, um, uh, if you like, programs. Pick it up says since 2015, it has incorporated recycling into its plans. According to the reclaimers, their problems started during the ANC administration when they were given irrelevant training before the DA took over the city's administration. The training that the city has, has, has provided for, for the waste pickers, it was actually, you know, it's, it's, it's a way of, you know, stealing taxpayers' monies and all that, because if you're going to take me as a waste picker and you go to teach me about all the accounting, auditing and all that, there's nothing that I can do with it, you know. So those tra training, we see them as useless to us, you know, rather than they should be using that money, you know, to support us with transportation and all that, or rather train waste pickers to you know how to run their cooperatives and all that, rather than introducing private companies that are also roping us. Researchers say despite the claims of improved waste reduction, when the private companies are engaged, it has not made a dent in the amount of waste that gets recycled. The city also has a huge problem with illegal dumping. Illegal dumping costs us about 60 million because you will have over 2,000 illegal dumping spots within, known, I must qualify that. We have over 2,000 known illegal dumping spots. There are probably more. We're mapping them now using GPS and all of it. We will always have illegal dumping spots which will prolong, you know, the remaining uh, space or, or use of life of, 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 of our landfills. Special assignment requested an interview with the mayor of Johannesburg, Herman Mashaba, to discuss what looks like an anti-poor policy of the city. But instead, we were given councillor Nico de Yaga, who is the MMC for Environment and Infrastructure, who denies they are anti-poor. At the time, very few people organised themselves into the groups. And when we did have that happening, it's actually running very successfully because we do have some uh, SMEs uh, operating, the waste pickers operating under SMEs or purpose, whatever we want to call it. But we have some groups who have formalized themselves in order to get contracts from the city. He also denies that the reclaimers are being expelled from their business. They are not beaten up by employees of the city and they're definitely not being beaten up by the company. It has absolutely nothing to do with being beaten up over, uh, over, over collecting waste, but rather it's because they're trying to protect their trolleys. Or oh, I asked to pick it up that when we upgrade, we make provision for the storage of overnight storage, that is, of these, uh, the trolleys. Despite what they say are threats of complete exclusion from the system they initiated, for people like Stephen, it's a matter of keeping up the hope that things will change.